well, my name's Audrey Dingle, and I've been interested in family history for some time, especially because I couldn't find my grandfather. So I um, looked for him at school, where he uh, left the practicing school in uh, 1893, just at the time when his mother had died. Uh, I could find no other trace of him, so as a last resort, I searched the workhouse records at the Gloucestershire Archives and discovered he'd been put into the Cheltenham workhouse in October 93 until May 1894, when he'd been sent to the Cheltenham Gordon Boys Brigade. This was something I had no idea about. So, I set to and discovered the brigade had opened in 1890 with headquarters at one Liverpool place, which is uh, just off the high street. And the aim was to fill the gap between boys leaving school aged 12 until old enough to learn a trade at 15 or 16. And the brigade was for poor boys of good character. They would be given training, firm discipline, help finding employment. Boys who had no homes were found a bed at the industrial school in Oxford Passage, which was right by the uh, grammar school in those days. The boys were taught carpentry, some aspects of shoemaking, tailoring, and repaired their boots. The brigade was run by a committee, mostly made up of retired army officers, and the official opening was in May 90. A year later, they had 66 members, which had risen to 76 by 1896. By 1891, 40,000 commissions had been executed by the boys doing household tasks, a corps of messengers delivering messages and parcels, gardening, etc. They wore a uniform which was dark blue with red facings, belt and Glengarry cap, bearing a badge complete with a number. Their average earnings in 1895 were seven shillings, three and a half pence per week. Three pence was deducted for brigade purposes and each boy contributed a penny towards their daily dinner at headquarters. A penny in the shilling was deducted as deferred pay and deposited in the post office savings bank for the boys when old enough to obtain more advantageous employment. The brigade had a school of handicrafts, assembly room, drill hall, gymnasium and workshop. There was a drum and fife band whose members were taught by rote. The boys were taught carpentry, shoemaking and tailoring, made their uniforms and repaired their boots. Quarterly church parades were held at different churches in the town and the boys marched to and from the church behind their drum and fife band. Every year a Christmas dinner was held for them uh, at the beginning of January and every other year an outing was arranged in the summer for the boys. The brigade was financed by subscribers and donations Apprenticeships were arranged, entry into the army or navy, emigration and employment. The main aim of the brigade was to inculcate the virtues of discipline, order, morality, honesty, cleanliness, sobriety and respect for others. Thrift was also encouraged by helping the boys to put aside small sums for future use. The Gordon League was formed in 1897, which was specifically for old boys, and they took part in cricket and rugby matches in the area as well as in a whist league. For many years, the Gordon Lee played in the Cheltenham Cricket Challenge Cup Division I, which sadly they never won. In 1906, the second team won the Challenge Cup Division II title. There was an old boys' dinner held in the town every January, when sometimes over a hundred would meet and reminisce. Many letters would be read out from old boys who had emigrated to countries far and wide. When World War I began, everything changed, and many boys enlisted or were conscripted into the army. By 1917, the brigade had 34 boys, whereas before the war it was 57. Currently, boys in the town were being paid at what were formerly men's rates, so were not so anxious to join the brigade. Gordon boys had the extra incentives of food, clothing, boots and money put aside in deferred pay to help them start in life. It was definitely not a dead-end job. When boys left, it was usual for them to receive 10 or 12 pounds from their deferred pay, which helped them to, when they started permanent employment. During 1917, the uniform was changed from blue to khaki due to the scarcity of blue cloth. The reduction in membership put a strain on finances and reserves had to be drawn on. During the war, 500 boys joined His Majesty's forces, and of these, 50 lost their lives. Two old boys gained commissions. 
the band, gymnastic class and swimming class had to close. In 1920, the boys' annual dinner in January was reinstated after a year's break, which had been caused by the customary meat provisions not being permitted. Also, standard Christmas puddings were back on the menu after the apple puddings the previous year. Swimming lessons were also able to restart in the summer. By the end of 1922, there were 27 boys, and by the annual Gordon Boys Brigade dinner in January 1925, only 24. Despite the best efforts of the committee, by May 1925, with dwindling numbers, the committee decided to close the brigade at the end of September due to a shortage of boys and lack of funds. The chairman could not understand the change that had come about since the Great War. Could it be the uniform, or did their parents prefer them to draw the doll? The annual meeting could decide. Every effort had been made over the last three years to get more boys, by contacting the Juvenile Unemployment Committee, by the Honorary Secretary addressing the Chamber of Commerce, and by canvassing business interests in the town. On the 24th of September, Brigadier General Peebles, the chairman, made a presentation of a silver teapot to the superintendent, Sergeant Major Slade, on behalf of the brigade and its supporters, and to the matron, Mrs. Morse, a silver coffee pot. They were also to receive a cheque when all the subscriptions had been received. They devoted their lives to the Gordon Boys Brigade for 35 years. Sergeant Major Morse, the late husband of the matron, was the superintendent from the beginning of 1890 until his death in 1906. Over 800 boys had belonged to the brigade in its 35 years. There was a feeling of sadness that the brigade was now at an end and the chairman expressed a vote of thanks to Colonel Thoits, the honorary secretary, for all he had done. <laughs>